Good morning, Harry. Uh, happy to be with you this morning. You are the founder and CEO of Cargo, one of the pioneers in mobile advertising. Do you think that Gen AI, which can create content or repurpose content, reformat content at basically a very low incremental cost, will that change the game regarding personalization? And how do you see personalized advertising going forward? I don't know that it's going to be as obvious as uh, the AI will generate the ad and then that's what you put out. I don't think that's going to happen, at least not what we're seeing at this moment in time. What we will see is, again, when we talk about tool sets, and I'll give you a very specific example. We are moving into the connected television space, but we're taking a viewpoint that we should start from digital video, from social video, and move that into connected yep. television versus what you're seeing with the industry broadly, which is taking sort of their practices in linear, shooting a $2 million spot, $3 million spot, you know, drones, helicopters, open roads, a car going down at, at speed. You know, those are very expensive creative processes to actually to create, let's say, a car commercial or a, ph a pharmaceutical commercial. There's a lot of talks on how AI will be or is actually already disrupting advertising. Gen AI is coming with another wave of, of disruption on the sector. We are seeing from our standpoint lots of change on targeting, on content production, repurposing, management, many different things. We see on the advertising side, the agencies are changing a lot. We see newcomers on, on the field, which are challenging the agencies. We see the marketing and advertising functions in large corporations extracting massive, uh, massive productivity gains. From your standpoint, where do you see AI bringing the most dramatic disruption? What we've seen with that is there's no, been no disruption. It's been the same for the last 50 years. And what a large brand can do, because they, get, they love that creative experience and flying out and being on the set, is they'll do like maybe three or four of those every single year. However, to your point about personalization, that entire practice is not ripe for personalization. It can't be personalized. It's too expensive. There's too much investment to get that one 15 second shot or 30 second shot out of that process. So the question when you go back over here and you're thinking about personalization, if you were to take like let's say brochure assets, just shooting brochure around a car, and then you need a voiceover, well somebody can write a voiceover and you can have generative AI produce the voice without actually getting an actor into yeah. a studio. So you can have an older male voice, a younger female voice, you can have a voice with an accent, a French accent, a Spanish accent, and you can put that into the mix where there's no cost now to do the audio overlay. You can actually pretty easily inject music into it. And then from a visual perspective, you can actually grab an asset from social or you can try to do a generative AI asset, although we haven't seen that yet, at least not in our business. Or you can even do a slideshow of photographs, which is a brochure asset. And when you put that together, it actually looks like a television creative, but what's the cost of production for it? Zero. And the beauty of it is you can produce 5, 10, 15, 30 different variations and you can run those variations against different audiences, different households and figure out which one of those against an audience type actually drives the best results. And so we're in a period where connected television advertising will start to look more like digital and social video than a period where you're just taking what's happening in linear and just moving it over. And I think that's super exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Ari.